lot of questions to ask. And we're running out of time, so I'm just going to ask one more question because I, I know many in this audience would like to hear the answer, Representative McLaughlin. Could you explain what you meant when you said that the Second Amendment was not absolute? Yes, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, and again, when I talk about the Second Amendment not being absolute, I'm talking about the Second Amendment as contained within the United States Constitution as interpreted by our courts. I'm not talking about political statements. I'm not talking about mythology. I'm talking about the fact that the Second Amendment, like the First Amendment, like the Fourth Amendment, like the Fourteenth Amendment, like all the amendments, are not absolute. When I say they are not absolute, they are subject to constitutional limitations. Example, what? U.S. Supreme Court said as a matter of law that the prohibition of the a Second Amendment that you cannot be a convicted felon and possess a firearm is constitutional. That's because the right under the First Amendment is not absolute. It is like every right that in the proper circumstances the government may infringe, take away, or take away, completely oh. reduce that right. Oh. I do not support oh. that. Oh. Oh. Sorry. That's so right. And the same and the same thing is true on the First Amendment. The First Amendment says you cannot shout fire in a crowded theater. The First Amendment says you cannot use the internet to put child pornography into the homes of our children. There are limitations on the First Amendment. There are limitations. You cannot conduct a public assembly in a way that would disrupt the traffic of the uh, Interstate 70. You have to uh, conduct yourself in a reasonable manner. You are allowed to say anything you want. But it's not absolute. That's what I say when I say it's not absolute. So I do not mean to disappoint these, those of you in this room who believe it is absolute. That it can never be taken away. But that is not the law of the land, and that is not the rule of the law of the United States. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to uh, address, because this is also part of the question, uh, is that I, we did not have a chance because of the time here today to discuss the three other things uh, that, that were in the, uh, in the legislation that I supported. So I'm just going to take 30 seconds to tell you why I did what I did. Just be quiet. First of all, the time for study is not, uh, is not waiting on the issue of the We have had a Did you just touch me? No, I touched your room. Don't touch me. It says concealed weapons are not justified. Concealed weapons are not justified. But nonetheless, the legislature is a concealed weapons permit. And just I stand on the other side of the door. That permit, Which is uh, other side of the door? Uh, I support the out of this room. Everybody you can stand on, on the door. Law abiding citizen should because be able to have a concealed yep. weapon. She's, she's part of in charge protection. of this, and she can ask people to leave. As I said on the campaign trail, okay. Okay. I don't think it's a good idea to send every kid to school okay. with a gun. I don't think it's a good idea to take a gun to your daughter's way. I don't think that. Everywhere in America needs a gun. I believe that the the bill which banned the uh, concealed weapons in the classrooms of our universities, that banned it in our in our public buildings, in our schools, I will stand by that. You can have a concealed weapons permit, and if you're a law-abiding citizen, I want you to have that right, and I want that right never to be taken away from you. But that right is not absolute. Also, I support it because the state of Colorado, in 1994, when we first implemented the background check into the check system, the state of Colorado, which at that time had Republican governor, Republican House and Senate, had a fee of $10 for that background check. That was taken away, and as a result of that, the taxpayers of the state of Colorado are subsidizing the background check system to the tune of a million and a half dollars a year. We are spending our tax money to get people to do this background checks. So I supported the $10 or the $13 fee to be paid by someone for the background check. 
Uh, so those are the things that I have done, and that's the reason I, I consider myself to be a centrist. I'm a person that tries to bring people together. Those of you on the, on the one position who are never going to listen to me and, and never vote for me, I'm sorry I disappoint you. I apologize. But the fact of the matter is, I will reach common ground. And so I say, to, I say to Senator Roberts and to her party, if you want to have a conversation about guns, let's have a conversation. Those of you in this room that think 30 magazine, uh, capacity magazines is a reasonable thing, in agreement with what the sheriff said, talk to these people and tell them, let's have a conversation. Let's come to a reasonable compromise. Because otherwise, we're not going to get anything done and nothing. And, and if that's what you want done, <coughs> We can certainly accomplish that. But no, 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 it's not a way to get things done in government, and it's not a way to protect the public safety and welfare. And I will not be a no, no, no person. I will try and reach common ground. And I thank you so much for having me. And we go back to the idea this isn't a campaign trail and it's not a debate, but I, I do need to respond a little bit here. Just this past week, I asked a um, leadership Democrat in the Senate if we could please have some conversation about the gun control bills. I was told there was no interest, and this is someone who I, I work with regularly, there is no interest in having that conversation. So I think you have to look at the political realities and to say that we should have conversation, I agree, but it isn't while this is being rushed through and passed by the House and then the Senate. And the Especially those of you who uh, bothered to speak to me Meeting's about the open. gun issues. Yeah. I understand this. I will restate my position. I will do the best job I can to represent all the people in this district. And those of you who disagree with me, I respect your opinion. And I will try and do my job. And I'm honored to be your state representative. And thank you for today. Doesn't matter. Public bill. Public library. Public library. Public library. Are you going to ask a question? In all these horrible, or at least the ones I'm aware of, all these horrible uh, shootings and things, all the ones I know about involve somebody that was mentally in the state. It, you know, everybody's talking about background checks, and, I, and I'm not going to But my concern is this issue is not addressed in background checks. These people would have had to commit a felony, and somehow that come out in that. So, what do we do? Well, see, this is the backside of what is still yet to be done yet. And, uh, in the other, the mental health component of the, of the gun safety laws, the, the gun safety laws are, I think they have brought those bills up. My understanding is there's going to be an increased uh, relationship between mental illness and, and, and getting that information known. Because to me, that's at least 75% of the problem, is people that mentally can't handle having a gun, get a gun, 
whether it's because gun owners are irresponsible or whether the people themselves steal it or, you know, whatever. No, and, you know, one of the bad parts about the whole thing is no matter what we do, so criminals always, always get guns. Right. And, that, and that's, that's, that's the uh, but, frustrating part about it. But nobody seems to address publicly the fact that mental illness plays such a... I mean, they give lip service to hearing that this happens, but there are no solutions being offered to take care of That's the question. Thank you. Thank you. Did you get the question? Anybody information to some committee or something that would say, okay, this person doesn't qualify for the mental HIPAA is a federal government mandated thing that you can't release the doctors or any kind of patient information without a signed consent. Yeah. Well, actually, there is an exception. There is an exception in HIPAA that says that if the mental health or the physician or the nurse believes that that person is mentally ill and dangerous, it's a, it's, a, it's not a violation. Of HIPAA. But there has to be. Increased communication between the mental health professionals, yes. patients, yes. and law enforcement. But the only question I have is how do you do that? What are the check and balances that have to be in place? You know, I mean, theoretically, you could get a very who, if he knew a patient had a gun or any of his patients had a gun, he'd turn them in and say, by my restriction, just have this gun. No, I agree with you. And, uh, uh, yeah, no, I agree with you. I mean, it's, it's, it's a very complex issue, but we need to make gun safety and mental illness connected. Yeah, I, I just I'm going to try and do what I can. Yeah. Well, I also don't understand the idea of the, that last one, yeah. or even a family. You know, I have three boys that all have carry permits and they practice regularly. They're in the I would trust them with my life. Any of the guns that I may have that I can't pass on to them without him or them having to check, I think is ridiculous. That's not really true. The bill provides that a family member can give a gun to your son or daughter. That's not, that's not what I read. No, sir, it's in the bill. It's in the bill. And you also can will it to anybody else. No, you can. They do not have to go through a background check to transfer a weapon to your immediate family. If that's the case, then I'm wrong, but that's not the way I'm it's on, the bill is on the, on the state website. Okay. You can take a look at it. But I looked at that language specifically. Yeah. And uh, it does say, oh, it may have been one of the things that came up in the, uh, in the hearings was would it apply to a cousin or a nephew or something like that? That's that's an area that needs to be worked on. Okay. Now, your immediate family members automatically do not have to go through a background check for a transfer. Well, I missed that then. I'll double uh, check. Yes, sir. Hi, sir. Hi, How are you? Uh, you were you online? Uh, did you work for the college student? Did you work for the concealed carry college student? I did. Board? I did. I did just only because. And here's the thing. This is another part of the no conversation. I do not believe that concealed weapons should be banned from all college campuses. I believe every college should have the right to decide themselves. For example, I, where do you go to school? Fort Lewis. Okay, Fort Lewis. If Fort Lewis and the governing body of Fort Lewis wants to have uh, concealed weapons in certain parts of the campus or the designate specific dormitories for concealed weapons, I would support that 100%. Nobody in my party agreed with that, and nobody on the other side would have any conversations about it. So, I mean, it's one of those so, things. But where now, from what I'm right, no college campus can have concealed carry. Right? As a, as the, the bill's not final yet. Right. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah I, and I, I, I tried to get my people to say, let the students decide. And this is my biggest frustration with Republicans and Democrats alike. Is why do we vote these party lines? I mean, across the board. I mean, Ellen, I appreciate what you're saying. Can we not? Is it all about party? I guess it's. I, you know, I don't think so because I, I try. I, I, I'm a very centrist Democrat. You don't know me, but I have many, many people who supported me and voted for me who are Republicans. But if if, if a Republican says we can't even talk about this and we will not vote about this, then we can't have a conversation. But I would again. I'm in the minority in my party, and nobody on the other side. They said we're not going to have any bans on any concealed weapons at all. And again, I, do you think we should have concealed weapons at sports events? 
of owning a shotgun, a hunting rifle, and a pistol. It's a privilege. The only right that we have, in my opinion, is the right to bear an arm of 1791 when the Second Amendment was enacted, and that was a smooth bore. And if he wants to carry a smooth bore musket in him, he has that right. But everything else is a privilege. We, I don't have the privilege of having a sawed-off shotgun. I don't have the privilege of owning a street sweeper. I don't have the privilege of owning a flamethrower. Those are the rights, those privileges have been abated by the U.S. Constitution or uh, Supreme Court. Just like you said, it's not, it is not an unlimited right. See, I don't agree with him. I know you don't, but I, I don't agree with him. Yes, sir. Oh, I agree. All time rotarian and pretty well. Yeah. You applied the four week course to all your, uh, your bills. Really? Uh, uh, not necessarily, no. Uh, you're right. right. I think, uh, I think that might help. Well, you know, um, I, I know you guys think I'm crazy, but I try and apply my view and what I think of that background check. Uh, we're not sure you can pass a background check. <laughs> you don't think so, huh? You just said you were crazy. <laughs> I said, you think I'm all the time. Well, I do, because here's why I think you're crazy, because who can you give from what happens here today, the reaction of the people, they don't want these bills, and they call you and tell you, we didn't send you up there to do what you think or you want, we sent you up there to do what we want. And most of the people in Colorado did you don't want these bills. No, did you I didn't. And I wouldn't have, you didn't send me up there to do anything. Yes, I did. And as far as the people who elected you, they sent you up there to vote for what the people of Colorado want. You're not elected just for the people that voted for you. You're elected by the whole state of Colorado. I understand that. So we don't want any of those bills. And you vote yes, yes, yes. And we call you until we don't want it. We don't want it. And you vote yes, yes, yes. You know, we don't want it. What do you not get about that? Hey, the other problem we got is that in trying to get input from all of us, your mailbox is full. Yeah. 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 I hope you will address how you can. Well, get as you may know, as you may know, uh, somebody took out a full page ad against me and gave my office. Yeah, you, yeah, you brought it, right? I hope you're voting for it. Yeah. yeah. Well, here's what I'm trying to tell you. I don't even know who Michael Bloomberg is. I never talked to him. I, don't, I think it, they're trying to make me have to be somebody I'm like, not. But and anyway, address your, your mailbox and you'll hear more from us. Well, the problem is that you only can record like 12 messages. That's just the state system. Okay, we tried to clear it out, and yes, I, I have received many, many messages, and I have heard from you, I'm sure. All of them have 30 round magazines. We're going to have them too. And uh, I appreciate your view, sir, but we just can't, can't agree on this. Well, you know, you spoke, your campaign ran on the fact that, that you were pro-gun. I am pro-gun. That ain't pro-gun, in my opinion, none of those bills are pro-gun. Yeah. All against uh, the public and their capability. How can you say that? Start figure out a way to get here. Just, just read this room. Just, That's the cost. Just get a background check, and then we finally <laughs> got the slippery slope. We got nothing left. Here they come. Legislation, confiscation, annihilation. That's how I feel about it. Well, you know, I think you're worried about something that's never going to happen. Oh, well, okay. and it's something that, that I'm never going to let happen either. If you say yes, it can't happen. If you say no, it can't. And I'd like you to say no. Again, that is an absolute view I can't join. <laughs> Representative Clark, you, you I mean, describe your conviction like with a 30 round magazine limit that you would support that. And also supporting the sealed carry on campus. 
Why didn't you vote your conviction? Why didn't you vote the party line? Instead of voting no one. Well, because if I had voted, well, again, I, I, I offered the on the magazines. I offered to raise it to 15. I barely got that you done. You believe in 30. Why? Why offer the 15? Well, because the bills are not done yet. I mean, th that bill can be amended to 30 tomorrow. You know, it can be amended in the Senate. I've already talked to people in the Senate. But no one on the Republican side wants to have any conversation about it. How's the current stand-up work in its current form? We're talking about courage. Well, you know, it's, not, it's not done yet. Trust me. I don't think thank, I'm being a chicken shit about thank this. Thank God. It's yeah. not done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, ma'am. It's been all about guns, yeah. guns, guns today. And I wanted to come and thank you for meeting this last week on Latina Advocacy Days with a group from Compañero. Yeah. And thank you for the campaign SB 33. Yeah. state drinkers my name is Stephen Bowers. Good. I, I sent you a couple of uh, pretty hard-hitting emails on the other Sorry. end. Of the in Colorado already. Okay? That was some good stuff Every on how the Bill of Rights is in. Allows your rights are... Every state. The so government has the right to take away County, your rights. You only got to drive down to New Mexico and you that can bring that... Thing. You can buy all the magazines. Plus, I, I do support any limitation on any Oh, that's going on YouTube. So that's going on YouTube. And again, the sheriff said 30 is a good limit. So, so I, that's what... Right. And again, yeah, yeah, people so, look oh, at these assault anybody weapons as a hammer defensive capacity and that's what it's all about. I'm not saying in a perfect world that I wouldn't support it. I tell you, when I was in Vietnam, I had an M14 that carried 20 rounds. And I, I would have... I would, I, so I support 30, but it's not going to happen as long as both sides are so attractive. No, and I appreciate your efforts to engage with the Republican Party on this issue to try to reach these other compromises. See, but that's what ours do. We just. There is always the uh, balance 